So we've got a brand new book coming out. I'm really excited for this book as well. This is Morgan Kane Presents Monsters of the Multiverse. What is in this book? What has changed? So this book is a compilation of critters and NPCs that originally appeared in Volo's Guide to Monsters and Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. In addition to all of those creatures, over 250 of them, this book includes 33 playable races that we decided to compile into this tome to create a volume that could serve as a companion both to the monster manual as well as to the player's handbook. So this book includes not only that material from Volo's Guide to Monsters, Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, but also playable race options from uh, Mythic Odysseys of Theros, Eberron Rising from the Last War, Princes of the Apocalypse, and the Tortle package, because even, even uh, the Tortle playable option for the first time ever appears here in a book. Uh, and our vision for this book was to create essentially one-stop shopping for DMs who want a collection of monsters uh, and then for players, a collection of playable races to accompany uh, the core books uh, that they have. This book will be available in May as a standalone volume, and it's available very soon also as a part of a gift set with the game's two other main rules expansions, Xanathar's Guide to Everything and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Right. And so these three books now, uh, the two everything books, as well as Monsters of the Multiverse, uh, are now the main rules companion uh, of the core books, the Player's Handbook, the Monster Manual, and the Dungeon Master's Guide. In the process of combining uh, all this material into Monsters of the Multiverse, we did a number of things uh, to update the material. We updated things on sort of the game design side as well as on the story side. And so I'll talk about each of those uh, separately. Okay, do we want, so what's, how has the story changed in, in this book? So the big shift in Monsters of the Multiverse when it comes to the individual creatures in the bestiary or the playable races in the Fantastical Races chapter is a shift toward the multiverse as our main perspective. Mm. In the past, sometimes when we have presented these creatures or these playable folk, we've often really been on the ground of either the Forgotten Realms or Greyhawk or Dragonlance or sort of a kind of medley of tropes from those worlds. And as the game shifts to more and more of a multiversal focus because we've we've been letting fans know for the last year or two that we are going uh, out there to other worlds, other planes, and there's going to be a lot of exciting journeys ahead. And so knowing where we're headed, which is to this wonderful array of worlds that really make the D&D multiverse special because it's not just one fantasy setting, it's a dizzying array of fantasy settings, including each DM's home setting, all in one massive multiversal setting. And so we wanted this compilation volume to reflect that shift, that broad view of this magical multiverse where there are many different worlds with different stories, uh, there are different subgenres of fantasy. And so often the story you'll see is less about how a particular group or a particular monster is seen on, say, the, in the Forgotten Realms, mm -hmm. and more about what is characteristic of them no matter where you go right. in the multiverse. Uh, this also uh, gave us a chance to uh, provide some big sort of universe-spanning mythical story beats, which were less appropriate the last time we presented some of these, these folk. Uh, for example, in this book, we do some deep lore about goblinoids. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, in going all the way back to first edition D and D, there's been the story of the goblinoids having their chief god uh, Maglubiet, but also going all the way back to first edition. I'm just impressed <laughs> that you were able to pronounce it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been saying the word for a long oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, going all the way back to first edition, there's been this story that. Maglubiet was not actually their original prime deity. That they had other gods before Maglubiet. Right. And then in fact they had a whole history before this tyrannical god united these different peoples, uh, hobgoblins, goblins, and bugbears, into what we now think of as the goblinoid family, and then they spread throughout the multiverse. Here, what we reveal is prior to Maglubiet's rise, the goblinoid folk were all a people of the Feywild, uh, in keeping with real-world folklore that associates goblinoids with the realm of fairy. Uh, and so we reveal that was their origin before Maglubiet conquered them and they became a unified people that, that spread throughout different worlds and what this really does is it shows the vast storytelling possibilities of just this one group, goblinoids. And then you can imagine those greater possibilities with other groups as well that have different stories on different worlds. And then also have this sort of mythic prehistoric story that goes back to the earliest days of the multiverse. That's, I mean, you and I have always talked about how we felt the goblins should be fae, like the kind of the, the gremlins creepy version of the fae, and, and that's what goblins represented, the goblinoid races and stuff like that, and, and that was like the fun of them. Uh, and this is also why we're seeing changelings, so I was really excited to see changelings in this book as well. Not just in Eberron, but these are, these are a creature that are fae that have been in multiple worlds. Or exactly. Or exactly. if they're not known, then they're not known, but they're there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's, that is uh, something that we point out that, uh, sure, most people are aware that changelings are in, are in Eberron, but it turns out they're all over the place. And part of the changeling power is making it that you don't know they're there. Right. <laughs> unless unless, unless uh, typically they want you to know that they're there. Uh, and also, as you say, also with changelings, we point out that they're... Their, their ancient origin is in the realm of the Fae. Uh, and there are, there are story beats like that throughout this book where we're able to sort of trace certain groups, their origins back to you know, the farthest reaches of, of the multiverse's uh, history. If you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.